hi. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I see that this is probably my best attended session ever. So <laughs> let's see how well I do. <laughs> you should take a picture of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Make a selfie. <laughs> That's what Thomas Cameron did. <laughs> yeah, never mind. It doesn't work. Um, so I'm. Let's first prove that I'm not going to be bullshitting here, and let's. Reinstall your laptop from scratch. Well, I could, but. So, for those of you who know this, um, this is the output that you actually get when you're booting from RPM OS 3. So, this laptop is actually running RPM OS 3 trees at this very moment. And it has been since January of this year. Um, so, sorry? Yeah. Presentation over. Yeah. So um I've told this to a bunch of people and they were all like, Yeah, you should tell people about how you did this because it's not trivial and I can tell you even after this, it will still be tricky and I can give some pointers, but it's still a lot of custom stuff. But we'll get to that. So, first note, uh, I've heard that marketing doesn't like it when you call it Atomic because it's not Fedora Atomic host. So officially, it's I can only use the name RPM OS3 because that's what it's based on. And I'm not using the official Atomic trace. That's just to keep the marketing people happy. But what name can I use? Is that a work for them? Okay. Okay. Sorry? It's Patrick. All right. Yeah. Like, it, the internal name, um, if it's displayed here, um, not <coughs> sure it is, um, is Piatrakis. That's the name I gave it. <laughs> I'm not very imaginative with names, <laughs> in case you wondered. <laughs> so, a little bit of the background, limitations of why you would want to use it and why not. Um, how you would set it up, which is going to be the most tricky part. Um, and then some of my experience of the last months. Um, so why would you use it? Well, the entire root file system is read only. And the entire thing is signed, <coughs> which means that even if a single thing has changed <coughs> underneath the read-only parts, you will know you will see that because if you notice the output, it actually says "good signature" from my signing key. So the entire tree is signed, um, and I'm currently running rawhide on this, and I updated this morning. Which I dare to because if it failed, which it did, you can easily <laughs> revert to the previous one. Like they finally fixed the case where uh, Doctor and SE Linux don't communicate, and now they broke wireless. They broke who? Wireless. Yeah, wireless. Oh, so. Wire. Oh, nice. Yeah. So also, if you want to know more about Rawhide, there's a talk about that just across this wall. Uh, <laughs> um. And the last reason for me is, it's fun, I guess. It's a challenge. Why not? I like challenging things like maintaining OpenStack, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> okay, um, limitations. Um, so there's no workstation trees available as of yet. Um, I know that Dave is working on that. Um, but that means that you will most likely need to build your own trees yes. because you will want custom packages and you cannot install that currently. I, I've heard they're working on layering, but as far as I know, that's not working fully yet. Um, another thing is like, 
which I really noticed is that Atomic or RPM West Street, it's out there, but it has a lot of bugs and the, the fixes come slowly, if at all. Like there's a few bugs that I've opened, which they're saying like that's um, because another dependency doesn't want to use a library, they won't use it. Like for example, comps groups are not supported in tree files. So you will need to spe spe specify every single package you want in your tree by hand because it doesn't support comps trees because libcomps won't use glibc. Ask Colin Walters for more. <laughs> um, it's not hard to get though. Just got pace, so. Well, I'll come to that later because I've got to work around. Right, but they don't want to do that because they're not in the business of comps groups. There's a whole lot of people that say like, yeah, it's not mine, it's theirs. Um, so since you can't add packages, um, you would likely use either Docker or virtual machines or perhaps Flatpak when I can finally get that working um, to run actual applications because I do want to get development done yeah, I do, because I'm a software engineer, actually. That's what I'm paid to do. Um, so I've actually decided to go mostly the Docker route. Um, and that means you will need to, le to learn a bunch of that uh, to get started and make it work. That's just things you should take into account before uh, going this route, because it in the end, it might be good. It will cost you a lot of pain to set up. Um, so setting it up, as I said, you will want to start with creating a custom tree. Um, then you will deploy the tree, um, provision and tests and everything. And then finally, <coughs> hopefully do some work if you ever get there. Um, so for creating a tree, right from the start, you get a bunch of decisions to make, like which packages do you <coughs> want? Some people will want GNOME. I have i3, for example. Some people will want Emacs. I use Vim. And no, I'm not getting into any wars here. There is no war. OK. <laughs> <laughs> you will also need to choose which OS version you want to use, because not everyone will want to use Rawhide. Um, how you're going to deliver it, because you would want to compose it somewhere. You could theoretically do that on your machine, but I prefer not to. So I have a separate uh, compose machine, which just runs a cron job to every, I think it's five minutes currently, try to compose a new tree. And then if it manages to compose, it pushes it to S3. Uh, where I can then download it from because it's cheap, easy storage that has an embedded web server. Um, so you would want to decide on these things before moving forward because they kind of decide the rest of the files. Um, so then you will create, you should create an initial tree file. There is some documentation on it um, but I will also give you the link to my own tree files because all of my setup is public and you can just base it off on that. You will probably want some scripts because you don't want to rerun RPM tree compose and push it every time manually and generate a signing key which you will need to keep secure for which I would suggest to go back in time and visit Nathaniel's talk. Um, as I said, RPM OS tree files do not um, support comps groups, but what I've got a Python script that just ingests a, comp a tree file, resolves the comps groups, and <coughs> spits a, a expanded tree file out. That's also in my repository, so you can just grab it from there. After that, you run 
our QMOS tree compose to actually compose the um, tree file into a tree. And it, it hope that it works because I will promise you the first few times you will hit upon a few, this package could not be found in the repo and stuff like that. Um, there's also a few packages which you cannot install like Dracut uh, Rescue because it will break the entire Compose. There's a bug hope for that, but they're not willing to fix it, last I've heard. Um, then you publish it, um, install it, which we'll, we'll come to next, um, test it, and let it rinse repeat. You will likely go through this cycle a lot of times. I've lost count. I think that my very first definition came to about a hundred trees before I started using it for daily use. Um, it's getting better, but... <coughs> so it's genetic algorithm? <laughs> <laughs> well... Is there an influence on the fact that you're using a ride to the fact that all this is spinning? Um, I, I was using Fedora 23 at the time to start with, so that wasn't the main issue. The main issue is like, you will find out that there are packages which should be pulled in but aren't, like for example, IP tables is no longer pulled in. If you install Docker, you will need a hard manual require IP tables because that bug is still open in Bugzilla somewhere. Um, so the first tree you took, you already had Docker's included? Uh, yes, like, no, the, the number of 100 or something is like when it was ready for me for daily use. So when it included Docker and virtualization and everything that I wanted for daily use. To get a first tree booting is a lot less hard. It's just a lot of cycles to find which packages you want. Because could you could you do something like uh, RPM and use QA on a machine that you're using and just use that list? Um, sorry, say again. RPM and QA is going to list. Uh, oh right. <coughs> yes, packages. you could do that. Yeah. Um, but then you get a whole lot of packages which the default install draws in, which you might not want. But yes, you could totally start with that and then. Removed from that. So we can start with Patrick's files. We can start with yeah. Previous files. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it seems to me like you're finding bugs in packaging, actually. Yeah. Um, you should be a proven packager. I am. Then you should just fix these issues. I do Good. when I, I find do. them, and it's not Docker. Okay. Because I'm not sure how well the Docker pe uh, people like it when you touch it, their package. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. if you're arriving, you would be able to make pull requests. Yes. But it's easier yeah. to just edit the spec and go. <laughs> yeah, like I, it, it was a requires colon IP tables that they were missing. But yeah, I've hit a lot of other bugs that where they're missing dependencies. I've, I think I've found most of them. Um, Won't talk to work with both sidewall being in Yeah, uh, I saw that you finally closed that bug no, you reassigned it, and now it got fixed, I think. Um, so, for deploying a tree, um, my, the two methods I prefer to use are a net install image, where you just uh, put the kickstart on the file itself, or what I do at home is a pixie boot. Um, so the fully automated regular re-image is something that I actually do because RPM West 3 has some garbage collection issues where it doesn't actually clean up everything from previous trees. So what I do on my laptop, I think every month, is just hook it up to the network, boot it from Pixie, and the entire OS will get re-imaged, but all of my data will still be there because that's on a separate partition. <coughs> um, sorry? Oh. So, 
that is the command that is used in Kickstarts to actually kick off a OS tree deployment. There, my full Kickstarts also in the repos, so you can also look at that. But the Kickstarts slightly personal because of. Um, Sorry. <laughs> um, partitions. Sorry, I. Yeah. So what, what, what kind of partition scheme are you using? Do you use the traditional slash boost slash slash and slash home or? Um, so what I've got is I have a volume group which has a of 250 gigs, 30 gig. So a part of slash boot slash evi, 30 gig home uh, boot. 50 or 80 gig home, and the rest is left free for Docker. So the Docker storage setup just sets that up as the new storage. I guess the real question is, does it matter? No, right? It doesn't, your partition layout doesn't really make any difference, right? Right, except that your slash should be big enough for oh. at least two trees. Ah, two complete trees, or one tree in the differences? They're diffs, okay. mostly. but. Um, as I said, they have some issues with the garbage collection, so it will grow slowly over time. Mm -hmm. I hope they will fix that in due time. It also depends on how frequently you recreate the image. Um, no, the diff is within the trees. Yeah, but the longer there is, uh, the, the, the longer time between two compilers and the bigger the diff is. Actually, no. I was saying it correct the first time. It will store two full trees. Mm -hmm because the entire tree is signed and the entire thing starts because yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a the video compress same files yeah it? yeah same files yeah like it, I think that things that are the same will not be duplicated because it's a git like ish method they use like they're using the same object system that git is also using um when you say sign, what, do you mean? what is sign? Um, the tree objects and the pointer that tells it which objects are for that tree. So where's that stored? Could you sign the tree multiple times? Yes. I, th I think you do. Like, the metadata should support it. I'm not sure the tooling does yet. But the tooling does support signing separately, so I guess so. Because that's that's stored in the metadata, and that's the very first file it downloads. Um, <coughs> and that contains the reference to the objects. So it's top down. It signs the, I think it signs the metadata, and then that points all of the objects. It's what I believe they were doing. But don't pin me on that detail because that's an implementation detail and I'm not 100% sure. So if you add file to, to the user, does that break the signing if you add a new file? Um, yes. So part one you couldn't because it's read only. And part two, yes, that would break signing because you would need to modify the underlying objects. Um, so for myself, because I reprovisioned it automatically, I built a tool, Secure Provisioning, which just automatically decrypts passwords uh, upon reinstalling so that I don't actually have to be there when it's provisioning. You could even do that for larger scales uh, setups and if you want to you can ask me more about the details and it also that's all public everything of this is public um, sorry Same including passwords um, no <laughs> well the, the file containing the passwords is kind of if you know the server stack of my machine you can get the file the passwords themselves are not they're encrypted with the TPM in here and a YubiKey. So you still need to be present to press the YubiKey to decrypt the file? No, because YubiKey for certificates doesn't use 
the press too. Like it's the X59 smart car that it's using. Um, so, my experience is that it's, I like it personally. As I said, it's not for faint of heart. It will take quite a while for you to get used to if you decide to go this route. It will take quite a while to get set up until we get a tree from somewhere else, like David. <laughs> um, and it is quite nice that you can roll back. Like, as I said, I upgraded this morning. It didn't work, you just roll back and you're back to a known good system. Um, which is also ideal, for example, in a managed environment for companies, you might want to use this because employees can't meddle with the local system all too much. And if an update fails, you can just roll back to the previous one. So that should lessen support costs probably. Um, here's a question. Have you tried using NS Palm to put at the same time uh, another point of the tree or the same one where you're at? Sorry, say again? Uh, you know NS Palm, the uh, system this stuff to run like another container? Oh, right. Right. Do you think it would be possible or have you tried using that to put another instance? I have not tried that. That would be an interesting thing to do. <coughs> could, could it be something that actually tests your tree before you can reboot? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. that sounds like a very interesting idea. Thank you. More. You just release <laughs> the rest of the conference for me. <laughs> <laughs> talk over. <laughs> yeah. Talk for, um, next, talk for next year. I'll just give you a topic. <laughs> Please come back in tomorrow or something. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just assistant. <laughs> When can I use this? <laughs> Sorry? When can I use this? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, you know, the 200 desktops, right? Right. Um, all identically installed, all kickstarted, um, every machine will pull updates and install them from a local repository that's not right. internet connected, right? So it doesn't pull from Fedora, it pulls from what I stage into the machines and separate comps file to um, to specify you know groups of local packages that gets installed in various types of machines. Right. Trying to think of how that works into this means where I compose trees and compose the layers on the tree. No, you don't do they layer? They're working on that. Okay. So eventually yeah. the idea is base tree and layers on top of those for different I think um, layers are made a little different. Layers are packages you install locally. Oh, so, which is you know, sort of a more of a developer thing, mm -hmm. more like you know, developer workstation than a uh, thing for like a uh, deployment workstation. You'd have local trees that <coughs> in this core repository that share packages. So it's the you probably compose a tree for each of your intended okay different yeah. variations. Well, okay, so things. I mean, how many of your things are you getting via the custom tree, and how many? of your applications are running as like desktop containers? Um, sorry? Are you running anything in containers or are you just running the tree? So I using run Docker in your, in your workstation? I run workstation. most of my development stuff inside Docker. Okay. Um, the only thing I run on the host system itself is um, SSH and Git because my keys are not shared to the containers, which is explicit. Um, I might change that at some point, but at this point, everything else basically happens inside a container. So, but is, yeah, the run like the, the user all this stuff, like application, your main client, your Firefox, your LibreOffice inside the Dockers, or are those yes. installed on the tree? Um, that is installed in a Docker which runs SSHD with uh, X forwarding. But that's not really important to the concept of this, right? I mean, I have no interest right. in running Docker containers on my user. Yeah, that's Desktops just... Right now, at least, and so... That's just for me, because I still need to... There's some real advantages to it. <laughs> yeah, the, um, so, yeah, and the plan is, as a is that flat packs will sort of roll... Right. 
as soon as flat pack work uh, works, I'll switch to that. Fine with an RPM though. So yeah, as long fine. as you're willing to compose custom trees and you right. need That's your users to install that. Yeah. yeah. Is it? No, of course not. No, <laughs> users don't have any <laughs> access. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why would you so like use your own? My users are dumb. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Play, I, one of the things we play with the unlock functionality to unlock the basic column add. I have not, yeah. Do you even know about that? <laughs> I think somewhere, <laughs> not <laughs> concretely. Yeah, I don't know if he's done. I mean, he did that for a couple of spend a month. Okay, so you, you can do it on my functionality. Not overlay on top of slash user, and then you can start you know, installing or anything else. All oh, right, that's the later things, I no, think. This right? is right. something different. This is oh. actually oh. transient until you reboot. Okay. So if you, like, say you modify. I guess Colin says like if he modifies OS3 and wants to try a new whatever, he just installs over his system with this and then sees if it works and then the real developer thing is not yeah. Okay. Right. It sounds interesting. I'll sure thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to jump are are you gonna talk more about specific hiccups that you've encountered in the presentation? Um no, because most of them were Either specific to <coughs> packages like SSH stuff or the trees that just then, take one time. Then I do have a specific question. If, sure. if you are if you are successfully running most of your desktop apps in containers, what what about the existing Fedora Atomic O RPM OS tree is um, not sufficient for you? You earlier were talking, for example, about putting Vim or Emacs in the tree. Well, if you're already running GNOME and the GNOME. problem is GNOME or any kind of desktop environment. Like Atomic Hosts yeah. only contains Bash and SSH. And that, like, the main reason I'm not using that tree is just for some graphical interface. Okay, so you, need, you do have the, ba the base um, desktop interfaces in the tree. Yeah. And then you're running apps that point back. Yes, yeah. because. Okay. Got it. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You still need to run X server and stuff. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. You said you're doing daily, daily updates? Sorry? You're doing daily updates? Um, I tend to, until, unless I know that there's a specific bug that's blocking me, then I do it as soon as that bug gets fixed, basically. If you're doing like automated updates, I'm just wondering if you could get into the situation here. If you didn't actually test an update and then another update was, you could get like two updates. Which no, because uh, it uses two trees yeah. and it always keeps the one that's currently booted. So if you would update, it always keeps the one that's currently booted. So if you update once, it will replace the non active one. If you update again, it will replace that one again. It won't touch the active uh, tree. Like I've done that a few times, but they are quite smart with that, I guess. So I just what was your flat pack on workstations? I've tried composing a tree with flat pack in it, and it kind of works. Well, I can show you. That's why. <laughs> it just set folds. Like, I keep trying it every now and then, and then it just doesn't work. Yeah. And this is a tree from 38718. Oh, I see. Okay. So, what is this thing? Do networking as a package? That's my first guess. Then you're missing a dependency in your package. Here you go with the bug. <laughs> We're finding bugs on during the talk. We probably still should not say that. You said that you updated this morning, and then the lawyer was didn't work, so you fall back. Yes. Uh, but the two trees that we are seeing here are from July. Right. Um, <coughs> this was the latest tree that got composed. 
And the reason for that is that um, the current RPM Westry is currently broken. <laughs> um, and I file a, or I send a message to Colin to ask like, how do I debug this? Because the 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 failure is very annoying. Composing or committing error no such file or directory. What file are you looking for? <laughs> I have no idea because during directly after this is doing so much in the code that you have no clue where it's failing. But that's why that's the latest tree for the moment. Um, tree upgrade. Let's see. That's brave. <laughs> well, this will only stage it. Like it will download it. Okay, I guess S3 has an issue oh, down. Yeah. Oh, the captive portal. The captive yeah. portal. Yeah. Right. Oh well. <sighs> <laughs> I hate captive portals, but. So how does this kind of thing work if you have a bunch of machines that all have static network? Is that, is it possible um, Etsy is outside of ah, the tree. Etsy is, okay. <coughs> is not covered under this. How do you get that on the system? Elsewhere in your Kickstarter? Uh, your, yeah, yeah. Your, just I elsewhere. Mean your Etsy is... <laughs> the default comes... Changed, so. Yeah, okay. so what so it does is it... The Etsy is actually composed in the tree, so it gets deployed. Mm -hmm. And when you get a new tree, it does a three-way merge between... Oh. The okay. previous tree, the current tree, and your changes. <laughs> How much problem did you have with post install scripts? How much what? Problem did you have with post install scripts? Um, quite a bit, yeah. and you will see that during all of the install or during the composes, there's a lot of of post scripts that provide warnings, and I've had. Oh, I think really? just two packages that those actually broke. The rest is just all spitting warnings. Those are all bugs, though. So. Yeah. So I've I've got two of them fixed, um, and when I finally find out what the other messages are, I'll probably get those fixed too. But so I wonder how that even works in a normal install. It just gets hidden. It just doesn't show anything. Yeah. Okay. Because it well, it's in the anaconda logs somewhere, but that's by default hidden. But some of the, are these post install scripts that are modifying things or just, I mean, you know, they can't do too much. I was, yeah, I mean, the, the thing, I mean, some post install scripts may just not work when they're open. Okay, I'm just doing things that don't. Yeah. So, one of the main things that you always see is things that talk to um, SE Linux because. During the compose, there's no as Linux enabled, or there's a special kind of context, I think, where it doesn't actually, um, where it can't talk to a lot of things. Um, so, a bunch of resources. These are the URLs with my uh, tree files. That's the topmost one and that also contains my kickstart and build scripts not my private key I think it does contain my public not my private key um, the second one is the provisioning uh, tool the next one is my set of docker containers like the docker files um, that I build everything from and then my website and how you can get in touch with me that's <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But if you break the core infrastructure, so you get paged, and then that's all you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Or find my paging email address. Good luck with that. I can open that. Yeah, it's not too hard to find, but I hope not too many people will use it. Um, are there any further questions? moment. Well, one, one question I had was I believe that it's possible 
acceptable to actually install with our post free system on top of a existing install not yes it is possible um, you can just run our OS3 remote add pool and then uh, deploy that tree and that will show up in Grub. So that should also work as a uh, quick way to get working True. But for my, since that's explicitly not what I want, yeah. that's not what I did. But yeah. It was only to experiment with the app to reinstall the system. Right, fair enough. So can this be used as a part of QE? I mean, how you compose those trees to find out bugs in packages? Very likely, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> should, should be useful addition to open QE, right? Yeah. And um, it might be an easier way to do it than composing the whole tree. I just don't know what the criteria are that would cause the problem you're saying. But the what what. Well, not. well, one thing you can definitely do if we are composing trees in Nightly and, and for Red Hat is we can test those trees, and that allows us to actually test the same code that's going out to users. Yeah. Like if, you know, if you do a Nightly test right now, you're testing something that's different from what we're getting with, you know, with a DNF update. Right. If you have an OS tree, then you actually test the exact tree that people are going to be going to. Yep. So that's for good doing QE. Is that something that you actually recommend using? Sorry? Using OS3 on your on your session, is that something that you would recommend someone to use? Or is that too much of a memory right that it's not also you need to? Um it depends on what kind of um for people who very often use yum install with some graphical tool not sure if you're mostly using text-based tools or like terminal or other not changing your package chat all that often um, I think it's a pretty good way to make sure that you always have a stable system you mentioned experimenting for some new applications in the so would you say that the performance is sufficient because <coughs> I was working on a thin client and I, I know how much it can suck you know, over the network. So right, but this is exporting over yeah, local no, connection. Local host, right? but, so do you have a feeling that it doesn't cost anything, that the graphical performance is just like it will be there at all? You notice it somewhat, but not okay, so too much. It but that's a Docker thing, not OS3 thing, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. That's just how you, I mean, you decide to do that. You could also <coughs> just forward the export. Sure. So, um, so I had a question about how you how you work on the machine. Are, 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 are you when you okay. when you're using no, Docker? Are you <coughs> using pet containers that you just work in freely? Or are you generally creating Docker files that are, are more Ready? That depends on the project, basically. For some projects, I just have a generic <coughs> Python and a generic. Um, I've got Node.js. I've got a couple of generic ones yeah. for back for stuff I don't touch all that often, yeah. and then I just do yum install inside there every time again. Yeah. Um, but for example, for Ypsilon, I've got a static tree, which is exactly what we where I've got two sets of trees. One, one is just like, what is on our website, like this is what you need for development. And yeah. the other tree is like, this is what we install in production, exactly. Yeah. So this is what we ship, and this should work. If this doesn't, we are having an issue. I'm using the second one mostly for testing releases and pushes, the first one for actual development. So do you actually build your own Docker images? Yes. And I actually even maintain up to the Fedora ver uh, base image. So, yeah. So what Kickstarter do you need to get OS3 set up? How new is, is that Rawhide or? Uh, I think that's in 22 oh, is when I first tried it. 
So yeah, it, it's definitely in 23 and 24. But not rel at all, right? Well, not rel. It, no, it, it, it might be, yeah. Over time it is in 7.2. Okay. And yeah. It should be more robust in 7.3. I assume it installs faster too, right? So it didn't, didn't do yeah, a bunch well, of RPMs and... What it does is just, it downloads all of the files and then run RPM Mastery Deploy. Oh, does it have to download the whole image? It downloads all, of, well, it gets the tree files from wherever you put okay. the tree files. So, I mean, there are things you can do to optimize your repository. If you don't optimize your repository, it's going to do an HTTP separate cat for every I'm thinking, you know, like 60 gigs of software I have to deploy to every workstation every time it installs. This is exactly so the benefit <laughs> from what uh, the Walsh was describing about the uh, containers in production, where we have it. Export it or uh, OS trees on uh, cluster and block file systems that you don't need to download all those images all the time. It's overly complicated though for no, maybe if you had a hundred thousand desktops, but only two hundred, so you know. Even with two hundred, you have NFS. You can deploy those. You cannot right now with Docker, but you can with what then was described. And my problem is my machines are way faster than my network. So, because yeah. I have a university network and it sucks, it's hundred megabit right. and, but you know, so. after the initial one uh, updates, it just downloaded the diffs. The diffs, and that's So, fine. that should be. They only have to completely reinstall a couple times per Fedora cycle, so it's not. Yeah. It, it is my first, <coughs> if you have a reasonably fast network, definitely faster than yeah. the uh, normal install. I'm pulling it down from S3 in, West Virginia, I think, is the region I, I, it's, it's thrown me in. And from here, but for deploying, it's a lot quicker than normal Anaconda. I think it takes about five minutes for a full deploy with a reasonably sized tree. So. It's not there. I mean, you're going to have to download the RPM from the local mirrors when you deploy your your machine on your computer. So you're going to have to download. Oh, of course. One of just wondering if it helps me any time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I know well, I'm downloaded. It's not right, but it's, you know, it's, you're a safe step. Like, you're not going to save some of the expensive steps that are in normal. Oh, of course. Call, like, DSC or whatever. Right. So but also, I mean, if I go from an OS, I mean, you can do cross OS version updates with this, right? So you can. Yes. So if I compose the Fedora 24 tree and push it and reboot my machines and running Fedora 24, right? Like, yeah. yeah. When Colin I went was from this at DevComp a couple of years ago, he actually was cross booting between Fedora 20 and RHEL 7. <coughs> yeah, I upgraded from Fedora 23 to Rawhide without reinstalling. Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out, does it make my deployment easier? Does it make the annoying updates easier? We're currently not grub and then reboot and hope the machine comes up and when it comes up it will install itself onto a new OS order. so I don't have to do it attended but I still have to you know it would be right. easier if it was just a well okay update yourself okay yeah, reboot yeah that's what you basically get here and then if I and if that's really screwed then it's like okay reboot back to yeah yeah but also because I with a normal cluster of machines you might get one that might not get updated all the packages before someone hits reboot or oh, yeah. stuff like that. Whereas here, you know that every system has the exact same yes. disk. So you could just have one machine on your desk, test a new tree on there, right. and, and if it works, deploy it everywhere because exactly if it works in one. I really want. Except if there's hardware problems. Well, of course, of course. But other than that, if it works in one, it should work on the others too. <laughs> well, except I have to make it work. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah. Any further questions? Well, 